Good Monday morning, my winners. Welcome to Break the Board. This is John Cole, your host, where we break down everything in the sports gambling world for the day. Recap the night before, uh, and we're going to go through all that. Got a good show planned for you folks here. Uh, but real quick, like to thank our sponsors. Bet Online is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds, lines, including your latest player reports for this year's NBA playoffs and finals. Bet Online is always your sports information headquarters this season. We have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. NBA Finals, MLB, NHL, Stanley Cup, right to UFC and boxing. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games right from the comfort of your own home. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BLEAV, that's capital B, B-L-E-A-V, BLEAV, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So last night, uh, Miami Heat take down the Denver Nuggets 111-108 to tie this series at 1-1. Jamal Murray had a shot late to win it, but uh, missed a lot of talk on whether to call the timeout or not call the timeout. But I thought uh, Mike Malone's answer was perfect, the effort. I mean, the Denver Nuggets come out flat. Miami gets up huge on them. I'm like, all right, it's early. Denver will come back. They do. They get a 15 in the third, and they let the thing just slip away again. All right? Miami is a dangerous team. <clears throat> and Miami's a dangerous team because flat out, they believe. No pun intended for the Believe Network. But um, Miami, they, they believe. And Denver, you know, it concerns me a little bit going back to Miami. Now, look, I'm not going to get on this train about it's going. So I still believe it's a six game series. We got that five unit back. So I got to have it be a six game series. But I really look at this and say to myself, you know, Denver didn't look good on the road with Phoenix. Didn't look good really on the road with Minnesota. I'm a little concerned. They better come out light hot in game three. I mean, just. Uh, I know Miami's crowd is going to be into it. Miami's going to be all jacked up on Mountain Dew. But, I mean, Denver has to come out. You know, they did what, the, what a lot of people thought. Hey, look, Jokic get his. Jokic only four assists. If Jokic isn't like eight assists or above, I think Denver's in trouble. And then defensively, you know, Coach Malone, I mean, I thought he was spot on talking about guys getting in their feelings because they weren't making shots or they're doing dumb stuff. I mean, Michael Porter Jr., and Kadarius Pope have got to play defense. You know, Pope's fouling people on threes numerous times. He can hit a bull in the ass with a base fiddle. You know, I mean, they just got to do a much better job. So game three tomorrow night, I'll be interested to see what happens. Uh, Nuggets opened up one and a half. They've climbed up to two and a half. Money line has the Nuggets minus 135. You know, conventional wisdom's going to say, hey, Miami, we should have taken Miami uh, last night, but um, that was at the baseball game. My daughter, a friend, uh, we've won five of our last six bets, so feels good to get back on the winning track here. But we'll look at it tomorrow morning and break it down further. But but the Denver Nuggets have got to play better. They've just got to play better. Stanley Cup Finals tonight, game two, uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, minus 140, comeback plus 117 on the Florida Panthers. Panthers did not look good. I felt like Vegas got a couple cheap goals. I like the Panthers to bounce back tonight. I really do. I like the Panthers at plus money to bounce back. Vegas is playing lights out hockey. But I think, uh, you know, I still think this thing goes seven. I think Florida is able to get one here uh, against the Golden Knights. But again, their goaltending play has got to be better. I mean, I thought there was a high stick goal that should have been called. It didn't get called. Then you had a late cheapo. But hey, look, the one Florida had off the face off, you know, the dark dagger there. I mean, so Vegas really controlled the game. Florida's got to do a much better job. That's not the Florida team that we've seen the whole playoffs. Uh, But I do think Florida finds a way to tie this thing up and get it to 1-1. Uh, right now for the series, Vegas minus 240, comeback plus 200 on the Florida Panthers. So we'll see how that goes as the day moves on. Uh, in baseball, 406, we got early Eastern start time here. 
with the Tampa Bay Rays and the Boston Red Sox. Of course, this game was rained out the other day. Uh, rotation number, uh, Tampa Bay 915, Boston 916. Tampa Bay will throw the uh, Cy Young leader in the clubhouse, in my opinion, at this point. I don't even think it's close. Shane McClanahan, the Southpaw, 8 and 1 with a 2.07 ERA, 1.15 whip, averaging 5 and 2 thirds. Uh, Brian Bellio, the righty, will get the call for the Red Sox, 3 and 3 with a 3.89, uh, averaging 5 innings pitch. You're over under a set at 9. Uh, for this one, Rays, 1 and 4, the last 5 in Boston, but 6 and 2, the last 8 overall. Uh, the over 29 and one, the last 30 meetings in Boston. Uh, right now for, uh, Boston low, he's questionable to play today. Franco, the shortstop, he's questionable to play today. Tampa Bay's offense, number two defense, number three. So they were one in both about a week ago <clears throat> and they've cooled off a little bit here. Uh, as you know, again, not to throw shade at Tampa Bay, they're a great team, but I'm not even convinced they're going to win that division. I've been saying that since they got hot. Same thing. Remember everybody's Pittsburgh. This is Pittsburgh's year. Right, calm down. We're two months into the season. All right. So in their last three, McClanahan, uh, his team is two and one. He's averaging six and two thirds, 0.97 whip, 1.37 ERA Bello one and two, five and a third innings pitch, but he has a 1.31 whip. And a 2.25 ERA. So he's been pretty rock solid. Uh, McClanahan, the Rays are 2-2 two two in his last four starts, but 8-10 and ten overall when he pitches. Against the Red Sox, he's won his last four. Uh, and the Rays are 5, have won 5 out of 7 when he pitches uh, earlier this year, back on April 11th. 7-2, uh, to two, he went 5 innings, 2 hits, 1 earned, 9 strikeouts. Bello, after winning five in a row, Boston won five in a row of his starts. They've lost his last two, but he's only given up a run and two runs in those. His last outing, May 30th against the Reds, four innings pitched, uh, five hits, one run, and that run was earned, but they ended up falling nine to eight. Again, Boston's bullpen's absolutely atrocious. He's faced the race twice, went four outings in each, five runs in one, four in the other. Lost them both. Both of those were last July. Again, Tampa Bay minus $1.70 plus 145 on the comeback. Uh, this is a stay away from me. I'm not going to lay a dollar seventy on the road. If you wanted to possibly um, do a little, you know, I mean, if you wanted to do a little parlay, maybe Tampa Bay money line, Phillies money line, uh, and do an alternate spread with the Panthers plus two and a half, a little three team high favored, you know, kind of cheap parlay, try to sneak in a win. I wouldn't, I wouldn't frown on you, but just not my style. But if I had to do something, that's what I would do. Uh, Detroit Tigers, nine Oh seven facing the Philadelphia Phillies, nine Oh eight. This goes off at six forty Eastern time. Phillies minus two thirty comeback plus one ninety on the Tigers. Uh, Tigers will send the South Paul Wentz to the hill one and five with a 7.280 ERA. Nolo will get the call for the Phillies four and four with a 4.70 ERA. Again, no real opinion. Like I said, I told you what I would do. Um, you know, gun to my head. If I had to make a play, Phillies raise alternate puck line on the, uh, Florida Panthers, a little three team parlay probably going to get you like plus 130 plus 140 nothing crazy um also 640 eastern time 909 the kansas city royals face uh 910 miami marlins carlos hernandez will get the call for the royals 0 and 3 with a 4.76 1.2 whip uh averaging one and a third innings pitched braxton garrett the south paul will get the call uh for the Marlins, one and two with a 4.22, 1.31 whip, going about five innings per. Uh, the Royals, 0 and 4 in Hernandez's last four starts during game one of a series. Royals, 0 and 4 in their last four interleague road games versus a team with a winning road record. Uh, Marlins, um, sorry, the, the over under eight and a half, the under five, two and two in the last nine meetings. Royals five and two, their last seven in Miami. Um, let's see. Royals 26th rank offense, 27th for the Marlins. So 
you know, you got two bad offensive teams. Their last three starts, again, Hernandez, the Royals are one and one when he goes, but he only averages about two innings per. He hasn't given up a run in the last two, though. Uh, Braxton Garrett, the Marlins, two and one in his last uh, three starts. He's averaging about five and two thirds, 0.84 whip, 1.62 ERA right now. Miami minus a dollar sixty. Uh, look, I, I I'm not a big favorites guy, but I don't see how you can go anywhere but Miami here. That's just me. Nine one one, the Oakland Athletics, the worst team in the history of baseball versus nine one two, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, this one goes off at seven oh five Eastern time. J.P. Sears will get the call for the A's 0-3 with a 4.37, 1.07 whip, averaging five and a thirds. Uh, Ovadio gets the call, the right-hander for the Pirates, 3-4 and four with a 4.50, 1.55 whip, averaging five and a third, over-under set at eight and a half. Pirates minus 185, plus 155 on the comeback with the Oakland A's. Um, A's 0 and 5 in Sears' last five starts after allowing five runs or more in their previous game. Uh, Pirates have won five straight. <clears throat> A's 1 and 6 the last seven meetings. With all that being said, A's 30th ranked offense, worst in baseball. Uh, 30th ranked defense, worst in baseball. Pirates got the 10th best defense, 17th best offense. Uh, in their last three starts, uh, Sears, the A's have went one and two, but he's got a 0. 0.82 whip and a 2.12 ERA. He's been really, really good. Uh, ex Yankee that came over. Uh, Johan Avedo, in his last three starts, Pirates are two and one, again, averaging about five and a third, 1.31 whip, 2.81 ERA. Look, uh, I don't like the game, but if I had to make a play, I would actually take the A's plus 155. JP Sears is a really good pitcher that gets lost because he plays in, on the worst team in the history of baseball. So that would be my lean again, uh, not strong enough here at, you know, I'm recording a little late today, eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, but we'll get into that and I'll have everything where I need to be by uh 3 PM Eastern time. Next game on the slate, nine Oh five Houston Astros at nine Oh six Toronto blue Jays. First pitch seven Oh seven blue Jays minus a dollar 26. Comeback plus 108 on the Houston Astros. Your over-under sets at 10, minus 115, juice to the over. Uh, Bialak could get the call for the Astros, 2-2 two and two with a 3.19 ERA, averaging 5 and a third. Alex Manoa, who's just been god-awful this year, 1-6 and six with a 5-4-6, four, 4 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's just really, really struggled. Um, the under, 5-0 and oh in Bialak's last five starts. Uh, the under is 6-0 in the Astros' last six games following a loss. Blue Jays have won four in a row. Uh, and the under 8-0 in Manoa's last eight starts versus the American League West. The under 4-1 in the last five meetings in Toronto. And the under is 3-1-1 the last five meetings overall. I guess that would mean you would have to take the under 10. But again, the way Manoa's pitched, that's that's kind of a hard pill uh, to swallow Altuve. He's questionable today with that oblique, um, Astros 15th ranked offense, number one defense in baseball, Blue Jays, number nine ranked defense in baseball, number 11th ranked offense in baseball. And their last three starts, Brandon Belak is two and one are the Astros when he goes five and two thirds with a 1.15 whip, 3.12 ERA Manoa. The Blue Jays are 0-3 in his last three starts, 1.66, 5.68 ERA. The Blue Jays, uh, pretty crazy, have lost all of Man the last six games Manoa has started. The Blue Jays have lost them, and they've lost eight of the last nine times he's went to the bump. Uh, against the Astros back uh, April 23rd of last year was on his only start, which Toronto won 3-2. Six innings pitched, seven hits, two runs, both earn. Uh, Bielak has never faced them, but he, uh, when he goes, the Astros are two and three this year, but he hasn't given up more than a run only once. That was back May 24th against Milwaukee, four nothing. Uh, again, Blue Jays minus a dollar 26 plus 110 on the comeback with the Astros. Um, gosh, man, it's so tough because Manoa has just lost so many in a row. Um, 
again, if I had to make a choice, I would take the dog here, probably uh, Astros plus the 110. Milwaukee Brewers, uh, 901 at 902 Cincinnati Reds. Uh, Brewers plus 105. Reds minus 125 on the comeback. Uh, Teron, Julio Teron gets a call for the Brewers, one and one with a .82 ERA, .82 whip, five and two thirds pitched. Uh, and then Andrew Abbott will make his major league debut for on the season for the Cincinnati Reds. Your over under is setting at nine and a half. Uh, Brewers 21 7 the last 28 meetings and 21 7 the last 28 in Cincinnati. Under five and two the last seven meetings. Uh, Monastero, the second baseman for the Brewers, he's questionable today. Brewers have 24th ranked offense, red, uh, the 12th. Uh, in the last three starts, of course. <clears throat> Tehran just got back on the scene, so his numbers are what that we said earlier with that .82 ERA. Uh, against the Reds, though, Tehran has lost four of his last five when he pitches. But again, with the pitchers really being an unknown here, uh, you know, I would be tempted to take the Brewers plus money, but we had the Reds yesterday. Just kind of a personal thing when, you know, the Brewers won a couple in a row there, and then, okay, Reds take this game and then they lose. I really hate betting against a team that may sweep. It's just a personal thing. Uh, not saying there's anything to it. Again, just personal preferences. Uh, St. Louis Cardinals, 9-1-3 at the Texas Rangers, 9-1-4. Uh, Adam Wainwright will get the call for the Cardinals. Martin Perez, my boy, the Southpaw for the Rangers. Uh, Rangers minus the dollar 32 plus 115 on the comeback over under nine and a half juiced minus 120 there 805 Eastern time will be the first pitch. Uh, I really like, uh, the Texas Rangers here with Perez, the Rangers just crushing the ball. I mean, they're putting up just huge amounts of runs over the weekend against Seattle. Uh, they got Seager back in the lineup. The Cardinals, they're just so erratic. I mean, they're just, they're a mess. They're either hot or they're cold, beat good teams, lose to bad teams. Look, anytime I can get Perez, as long as the line doesn't shoot up and it stays around that $1.30, uh, I'm much more inclined there to say, okay, uh, let me ride. Let me ride with the, uh, uh, let me ride with the, um, Texas Rangers there. Sorry, I apologize. Um, last game on the board for the day, 903, the Chicago Cubs at 904, the San Diego Padres. The San Diego Padres. Jeez. 910 Eastern time, first pitch. Kyle Hendricks, who just came back off the DL, had a really good start the other day. He'll get the call for the Cubs. Blake Snell, the Southpaw, get the call for the Padres. Padres minus 165. Come back plus 140 with the Cubbies over under eight and a half juice to the over. Uh, right now, Hendricks, again, only that one start, 3.86 ERA, 1.82 whip, went four and two thirds. Snell, one and six on the year, 4.50 ERA, 1.5 whip. Um, there is absolutely no way that the Cubs six and two, the last eight in San Diego. Uh, Cubs 16th ranked offense, 25th ranked offense for the Padres. You know, it's absolutely unbelievable that the Padres, you got a lineup with Machado and Cronensworth and uh and Soto and Tatis and just all the weapons they got. I mean, I know Nelson Cruz is on the DL, but you just got weapon after weapon, Bogarts, and and you got that kind of an offense. I mean, that's just that's that's just astounding to me. That should never happen. I mean, what what's going on there? I mean, you got maybe some of the best. I mean, you should have a top five offense in baseball, and you you're in the bottom half of the league. So, uh, again, in the last three, Hendricks has only had the one start. Snell four point two ERA, so he's been a little bit better as of late. When Hendricks does pitch, the Cubs have won. Uh, four of his last five starts against the Padres. Uh, the Cubs have won uh, four of his last, sorry, five of his last seven starts against them. 
Snell, when he pitches, the Padres are one and four in his last five and two and eight in his last 10. So it has not been good to him when he pitches. Look, uh, he faced them earlier this year. Cubs won six nothing back on April 23rd. Five innings pitch, four hits, two runs. Again, the way the Padres are playing, there's no way I'm laying a dollar sixty five dollar seventy. Cubs just beat him yesterday, seven to one. Absolutely no way in the world I'm doing that. So I'm not saying the Cubs are a play, but if I had to, I would take the Cubs. Gun to my head. So um leans for the day. Rangers are a lean. Uh believe it or not, A's are a lean. Astros are a lean. If I had to make a play on the others, again, I would take the Rays, Phillies, and alternate puck line in the uh, Panthers plus two and a half and a little favorites parlay there. Uh, Got no opinion on the Brewers, Reds, Cubs, Padres. I really got no opinion, but to me, you either take the Cubs or you don't bet the game. I mean, there's no way you can lay a dollar seventy there with the San Diego Padres. In the hockey game tonight, my lean would definitely go towards the Florida Panthers. I think that um, they'll bounce back. They've bounced back the whole. Uh, they've bounced back the whole postseason. They've really been red hot. I think they just got called in a bad, in a bad way. I mean, Vegas. That crowd was electric. Vegas made a couple plays early on, and after that, it was not that the Panthers gave up, but you could just tell momentum was not carrying their way. Uh, so we'll see if they can even up. Obviously, we got them in that parlay plus two and a half games. So we have to have Florida win two games in this series to keep that alive. On the flip side, we got us minus a game and a half on the Denver Nuggets. Now, I will say this with the Nuggets heat. It's went from, you know, the Nuggets were minus four dollars to win the title. And now it's down to like minus two twenty five two thirty. If they were to lose game three and go down to one, that's probably going to drop to like even money minus 120. That would be a really good spot to bounce back with a big bet on the nuggets and then lay it off, taking the dog, the heat in game four. So we can get into more of that later tomorrow, but that's it for today. Again, a very, very short card. Remember guy gave you a beautiful day. You got to wake up, be blessed, be thankful, have a heart full of gratitude, make a difference in somebody else's life. And remember, Every day you get to wake up is a winning day, just like in sports gambling. You can't win every day. It's impossible to think you're going to win every bet. If you live and breathe on every bet, man, you're never going to be successful at this. You got to understand, I might go through two months or two and a half months like John just did, but then we will off five in a row. If we get this series parlay in, that's another five units. If we can have a winning week this week, all of a sudden, you turn right around and you're positive for the year. Again, it is a grind. It is not an instant gratification thing in this business. No business is. Nothing in life is instant gratification. If it is, it's going to leave quickly. Look, have a beautiful Monday. Let's get the week started off right. Those of you that are signed up, your plays will be out by 3 o'clock Eastern time. If you're not signed up, email me at john at BCCS Sports. Like you thank our sponsor again, Bet Online. Uh, use that promo code Believe Capital B L E A V to get fifty percent off uh, on your first deposit. Check us out on Twitter at BCCS Sports. Go to our YouTube, click that link uh, with the little thumbs up and subscribe for us, and you can get this where all your Apple and Spotify podcasts. Again, have a great Monday. Love you, my winners. Mm-hmm.